Okay, a final little bit to go on the alcohols topic, the elimination reactions. So we discussed earlier, especially in the alke with the alkenes, how you can turn, say, ethene here into ethanol. So it's the industrial method where we're going to use some sulfuric acid and steam. So high temperatures boil that water. And you can crack open the double bond and effectively, as you can see here, water has been added across it. So this is a hydrolysis reaction. You've hydrated that compound by adding water. Now we can also do the opposite if needed. So where we get the alkenes from? Well, fossil fuels. So fossil fuels eventually going to run out. So what the alcohols are useful for is they're a renewable source. We can turn the alcohols into an alkene. So effectively getting us a renewable source of this. Alkenes, very useful. You can make the plastics and all sorts of reactions leading on from these very good starting building blocks. So the way to do that, some concentrated sulfuric acid. Note in either of these cases you can use phosphoric acid instead if you want. Makes no difference just as long as it's a particularly strong acid. So concentrated sulfuric acid and heat the temperature. Your alcohol here will dehydrate so it's an elimination reaction. As you can see the water there is being pulled off. So the H2O there is removed. So this is a dehydration reaction. Now you can use aluminium oxide instead if you want. Just heat this up, pass it over it as a vapor and it will do the same thing. I tend not to bother, well, telling people to remember that. This is far easier. So the concentrated sulfuric is there both times. If you've got water, then you will hydrate your double bond. If you do not have water, you will dehydrate your alcohol. So a bit easier to remember, a bit less, one less thing to remember. Now in terms of this product here, so starting from ethanol, we can only get ethene. Because as you can see, the OH coming off this carbon, it pulls off a hydrogen from an adjacent carbon. So not the same carbon, an adjacent one. There is only one adjacent carbon in this, so we will only get one product. However, if you've got longer chains, as we'll show, So, pentan 2 all here. So we're going to perform the elimination reaction, dehydrate this. As you can see, there are two adjacent carbons now where I can tear that hydrogen off. So we will not tear the hydrogen off these, hence why I've just written them in short version there but we can remove either of these. So we can either do that or that. So you will get different product. Hopefully you can stop the video, have a little doodle yourself and try and draw these products. Okay, better shot of that. So there is one of the possible products when I've removed from this side, formed the double bond in there as you can see on the end, and then the CH2, CH2, CH3 left up here. So this would be pentuanine, so the double bond starting on carbon one. Likewise, I could remove and form the double bond on this side. and get this compound. Now with the 
this being the two in here, as you should be able to see, in terms of the geometric isomerism, what you've looked at with the alkenes previously, there will be an E and a Z version of this formed. So in terms of which one this is, well, who's got the higher priority, carbon or hydrogen? So carbon. And across here, who's got the higher priority, carbon or hydrogen? So carbon again. So these are both on the same side. So hopefully you've remembered your really bad French accent. Z is the same. So Z pentuene. And you can also get the E version where if you just flip the, the methyl on the end there and the H around and you would get E pentuene. And that is it for the alcohols topic.